Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today we're going to get to pruning up my black locust trees. It's going to be very interesting to show you how uh, black locust trees that grew outdoors, um, they mature as opposed to the ones that I grew indoors, you know, 24-7, 365. So uh, it's quite a big difference, and also it is Valentine's Day, a couple days from my bonsai anniversary, my third one. And Laura got me some really cool stuff that we're going to work on this week. So I'll give you a little preview of that. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. We have the black locust that I grew from seed uh, December 2018. So a little over a couple of years ago. And I think I have eight trees in here. Originally, it was black locusts and some crepe myrtles. And I believe if these are the crepe myrtles remaining, they actually did not come back. So I'll probably have to pull those out this spring if they don't bud back. Oh, yeah, that thing's just breaking. So, all right, so six black locusts. I'm looking at this one over here, and I'll have to give you a close-up after. This thing is so cool. It's like basically crawling along the soil. And then coming up and over, so that's totally dope. So these aren't necessarily like set up in the forest style that I will uh, be permanently keeping them in. It was more like this is how they grew up um, as seedlings, and then I just transferred the planting over. I didn't, you know, like transplant them. I just like moved it into a larger pot. So this is actually this is the base or the top of a little bird feeder. I had these three white plastic bird feeders that I did different plantings in. And um, I took the base off to bring this in this winter. And look at this. Those are all roots. It's crazy. It looks like a horse's freaking tail. Insanity. So I'm still gonna leave that. I dumped the water out that was in there. Um, just for the purposes of this video, but I'm gonna leave that until spring for sure. Don't wanna mess with the roots right now. But I just thought that was insanity. Like that's why this thing looks so good. So, so this one was grown outdoors the entire time. And if you can't see right now, I'll bring you in for a little closer view in a bit. Um, but there are probably a third of an inch to half inch spikes going all up and down this planting. And that was all outdoors where this one, see this one right here, it's in an avocado planting because of the avocado being uh, so like cold sensitive, I have left it indoors the entire time of its life. So this one has zero spikes on it. And the trunk itself is like, a really light wood color where this one you could see where it's called a black locust because it's extremely dark especially on the new branching so find that very interesting we're gonna prune this one up that one up and then i have this bad boy looks like one of its main branches took a hit i did have some plumbing done this winter and i'm thinking they might have dropped something on this branch downstairs which is fine you know it's gonna get pruned anyways So, actually, before we get to the pruning, I just wanted to show you what Laura got me as a little Valentine's gift. And she's the one that got me started on my bonsai road. Um, it started with a, a bonsai starter kit, the um, Planner's Choice bonsai starter kit, a few years ago. And um, that was on Valentine's Day. And then I started on February 16th, and it's been like a passion, obsession, love ever since. So, anyways, uh, for our honeymoon... Last March, about a year ago, uh, we went to Barcelona, Spain, and loved every single second of it. Obviously, haven't been able to travel since, but she found this really cool potting clay, and it doesn't involve a kiln or an oven or anything like that. It's actually called Hovi Air Dry, and um, so there's a terracotta colored one, and then there is a white colored one and it seems like there's enough to probably do like three little pots of each so i'm really psyched about that because we always talk about like taking a pottery class and how fun it would be to make our own pots um 
I don't know, you think back to that movie Ghost when you were growing up as a kid, and it was just like so cool, the thought of being able to make your own pottery. So, so excited about those. And I had done my best a few times to grow olive trees from seed and failed. So she found me a, a seller that had these awesome olive plants and this actual um, olive variety is from Barcelona or the Catalonia region of Spain, which, you know, is Barcelona. And it's called Olea Europea Arabic Arab. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's it they're olive trees. So <laughs> anyways, got a couple of those. Um and then the supplier actually um makes a soil based on like what type of tree that you're buying um and growing. And so she wanted to do these things called uh koki kokidama, K-O-K-E-D-A-M-A. And so it's basically like a ball of soil surrounded by this pretty cool ass green moss. And you grow it right on top of a tray. Like it's, it's not even really like a pot. It's basically like a cup. Um, and I'd never heard of it before, but it looks so cool when she showed me it. So I'm really excited to do that with her this week. So um, check back this week. We're going to be doing probably two or three videos. Um, building the pots and developing the kokidama and planting up these olives. So really an awesome uh, Valentine's Day gift. Um, so thank you to Laura, my beautiful bride. She's actually at her halfway point on brewing our baby, Stella Lucia. She's at 20 weeks. So all good stuff going on with that. So we're trying to do our best to enjoy every day um, and growing our little baby and not stressing out. So lots and lots of bonsai. All right, moving on. So here we have these. I'm not going to touch the two that I believe are crepe myrtles in the middle because A, I think they're probably dead and B, like why prune something that is potentially having issues anyway. So even if they aren't dead, they are growing very weakly. So we'll just leave those. But as you can see, these black locusts are really cool. They, I, I do no wiring. So like they grew up and they start twisting and getting all crazy and some nice branching. And this is, uh, maybe they've received one pruning, but I don't even think that. So it's probably like, this is their initial pruning. So not much to do today because there isn't that much cross branching. I'm just going to bring the height down. And um, even with these, there's four growing very tightly back here. Even with these, I'm not going to prune them as if they're like growing as one planting together. And so like if one's growing across another, like I would prune it off. No, I'm not going to do that because I will probably, you know, um, bring these up, prune the roots and change the layout eventually. Like right now they look cool, but this isn't how I, you know, have a final layout for them. So, I'm just going to bring the height down and I'm being careful because these thorns, they're serous. Take a look at this. You see those? I hope you can. This is the outdoor black locust. The indoor black oak locust has zero thorns. All right. That one just pulled right off. So there's three stronger trees and then three weaker trees. So probably the stronger trees I'll prune back a little bit harder than the others. The one that I had growing indoors with the avocado, it was a total mistake. Like it grew up from seed, but it was more like it grew from seed and like it never rooted. So every time I watered, it would just like float around in this planting. And then it just it stayed alive and stayed alive and stayed alive. And 
you know, finally it developed. It's got some really awesome curvature to its lower trunk, but it got attacked by spider mites late summer, you know, early fall, and I pruned it back and it hasn't done a thing since. And I've just been assuming like, okay, all I have is an avocado tree now because this thing died, but there is some green to it. So I'm hoping that we didn't lose it. And this is, this tree is very like, I've seen this before in other trees. It's got so much of a zigzag with its new branches. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a black locust thing or because I keep turning it. I really don't, I couldn't tell you. So I thought these were a great little pot. It's like an eight dollar uh, plastic bird bath, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get them, drill some holes in them, and put some plantings in them, a little forest plantings. So I have one that's a thuja, um, Connecticut red pine, and blue spruce. That one's pretty cool. I have one that's a Canary Island date palm, and then I've got this black locust and what I thought was going to be crepe myrtle, but the crepes might not have survived, but. Three totally different plantings, all from seed. Pretty cool. I'm thinking this is probably a popular time for people to start getting into bonsai and growing things. So if you are, just like try a ton of different things. Don't get discouraged because it's, if you know, you expect things to happen overnight, it's not going to two, three years, and I'm still looking at um, some of my initial first prunings and repottings on my trees um, that are grown from seeds. So no rush, right? Yeah, so these are just, I'll, I'll give you a little uh, close up of this one that's growing up across the ground. That's gonna be my favorite, I already know. And then there's just a few small ones back here. I'll just, I'll just nip the tip on that one. Yeah, all right, cool. Look at that. on these are ridiculous it's basically like a little fish hook it's totally sharp all right so this is the other outdoor one um the one that i brought into the basement it's a specimen and they made my choice for me it's i had to be the plumbers this definitely wasn't me so i'll just print it just below where that thing broke off um i had noticed that this one kept its leaves a little bit longer than the forest planting. So for whatever reason, I was curious. I'm like, okay, is it going to go into dormancy or what's this thing doing? Because it does get down to about 40, 45 degrees Fahrenheit downstairs. And I was wondering when it was going to happen, but finally it did. So I'm just removing the last of the leaves. Ow. All right. That branch just attached itself to my forearm. That was fun. <clears throat> so I've got this one branch growing completely horizontally into this other nice looking branch that's kind of moving away from the main trunk. So I'm just going to take that out entirely. Knit, 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 boom, boom. Couple weaker branches, net, net. There's one tiny little deadwood looking branch coming out of the crotch of one of the trees. Yeah, so, I mean, this one's pretty basic. Straight up about eight inches. It's got a low branch, another low branch a little bit higher. Um, not as dominant and then boom a split here and a single branch coming up here and a split so it's not that exciting yet but i think it has a really nice start if i recall like when its canopy grows in that's what i love about these black locusts um 
I almost want to call them like black loci. <laughs> uh, they have these really nice, soft, small round leaves, but they're really cold hardy. So it's almost like you get that tropical feel uh, up here in Connecticut, where we're a four season state here in the USA. All right, so this one, I don't know that I'm gonna do so much pruning of the other things, but I'll just prune off some of the, the dieback from other times. Yes, yeah, so this one has zero, zero prickers. And if you could tell already, like, look at the difference in color of those trunks. Same exact species, same exact group of seeds germinated at the same time. The only difference is, is this one, everyone outside. So. So you can see that swiggle in the trunk there. This is God of War from like the Indies or Andes or one of those tribes. Incas maybe? Yeah, Incas. So that's pretty cool sitting in there. But that thing has such a nice little movements to its trunk and I didn't do a thing to it. So I don't want to touch this too much because like I said... I wasn't even sure that it was going to come back, but now I can see it's greening it up. So very exciting. So I'll just give it a little bit of a profile prune. I'm getting prickers in my feet. Okay, fun. Take this just inside the plant there. And I'm going to prune this again. So it has a pretty cool branch structure already, along with that nice moving base. I really wanted this to be just this gnarly black locust tree sitting under a cool avocado planting, you know, like a big old canopy. Um, these are the biggest the leaves are going to get. I'm just leaving it for right now because they really slow down in the winter here. Uh, but typically, you know, the leaves will be about that size. And I just feel like that'll be a fun canopy above canopy. Who knows what it'll turn into. It just kind of naturally happened. So that's it, y'all. I hope you enjoy your Sunday. Um, I'm really excited. Please check back to watch Laura and I do these pots and grow these little olive trees. And uh, yeah, so we're looking at a few more weeks of winter here, maybe four more weeks. But once that's done, it's going to be an amazing spring. Tons of repotting this year, uh, tons of new growth, new prunings. I'm really excited. Uh, finally, like my hard work of growing all of my trees from seed is really going to pay off. So we're really, really going to start to uh, get some cool looking bonsais here. So please check back. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead, do so. Hit that notification bell. And we'll see you soon. Cheers.